This is an analysis of Bach Chorale BWV 19.7. Um, this is relatively short, actually more straightforward than some of the other chorales. And it has as a feature three trumpets playing along, which doesn't change too much about the analysis, except in a couple places here, here, here. Um, the trumpets have a unique note that will either give us a seventh to the chord or change us to the root is missing in here, but in the trumpets. And so that can change our analysis. But for the most part, it's just simply reinforcing uh, what's going on. Uh, what we won't do in this video, but what I like to do um, is uh, I like to take a look and see when Bach's writing a chorale, but then he's writing another set of instruments, how much they interlock and duplicate. And it's just um, beyond the scope of a video like this um, or for a theory class. But for me as a composer, it's always interesting to see um, what they do uh, when they have um, complementary parts. And so we won't do this for the whole thing, but I'll just show you what I mean by that. And it's worth your time if you're interested in writing uh, to see what people have done. For instance, it's just at the very beginning. Um, the trumpets have two parts here that work very much like the chorale, G, 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 which is the alto line right here on the top here, which has been inverted and thrown at the octave. And then the E, D, C is the C, D, E, um, voice exchanged or flipped upside down. And then we have C, G, G, E, right? Which you could think of as C and then G, G, E is completely unique. And so at the beginning, we'll hear, in other words, one stable line from the inside thrown up on top, one that's a modification of this line here, and then a unique line there. Gives it um, a sort of unity or um, connection to and fusion of the chorale part, but still has independence. Um, and then sometimes, you know, like you've got straight up what's going on here, texturally the same, but here there's G up on top along with the A, C, and the E takes from an A minor chord to an A minor seven. Anyhow, that's something that, that I find interesting is how different composers approach that Obviously, the simplest thing to do is to just mimic and double what's going on here. Um, and the most challenging thing to do is to write something that's completely different. That can be you know, messing up your singers or it can fight with what you've got going on. Bach seems to hybrid between the two. He has things that complement that are derivative of. And uh, also um, sometimes uh, modifications of what's going on as well as unique other lines that are strictly for the trumpet as well. Anyhow, enough of that. Let's just get into the analysis. This one's pretty quick, actually. I've pre-done all the chords, but let's take a look at the cadences to see what's going on here. Um, first off, I'm starting in the key of C, right? And oh, this pen not working great. We're gonna need to stick something underneath it. So that writes a little better. Um, and if we look here at our first cadence, it's a G chord followed up with a proper D. And so this is changing from C to the key of G. And this is a root, 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 five to one in the key of G major. And so we can see that this sharp shows up here for the new key. So instead of just calling this a five of, we're actually gonna change keys early and be in the key of G, right? And I think maybe we'll just do them as we go along because it's pretty quick here. I'm gonna change pens, this one doesn't seem to be working. So C chord is a one chord, G chord is a five chord, C chord is a one chord, and we hear it that way just because that's all there's the information we have, we get this, right? And then we hear this D chord, right? And we think, oh, this is a five of five. Um, so you think, is it a five of five, right? It's a 
question mark. And if so, we should be going to a G chord, but we don't, right? Then it becomes a proper D7 right there. So what this is, is a, uh, it's not a one chord. It's not what happens. Because of the cadence coming up and the, the music that's coming afterwards, we change key. So if you think of this as four in the key of G, then this is five, right? My D chord. And this is four, six. And that's just the deceptive progression. Four in first inversion is the alternate form of a five going to six. They're the same chord except for one note different, and the bass line is the same. So this is a deceptive progression in the key of G, right? And then this comes back to a proper five, seven, going to a one followed by a two minor seven, actually six five because of the inversion and then five one, right? And so, yeah. And it's a perfect authentic cadence in the key of G. All right, so then we look at the next phrase and uh, we find that we return immediately to the key of C, right? We have a G chord right here. We have a C chord right there. The F sharp is gone. The chords all match in the key of C, right? So you could say, is this four? But actually, I don't feel that in our ears. We hear this many times where you go to the dominant, and then if there was a repeat sign here, you'd say, oh, I'm back in the key of C. And it's sort of the same thing. If you look at the melody, bum, 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 and it's like there, and the bum, 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 same but there, even though it's harmonized differently. Our ears just immediately hear it in the key of C again. This is a one, six, right? Right, and here's my one chord and my five chord, and my two, six, five, and my one, six, four. And this is a P, A, C in the key of C. Right, so this is five, G, going to my one, passing notes, four, six, because my F chord's inverted, and one, six, four, sorry, not one, six. This is an interesting figure here, and Bach will do this again, so it's not just a one-off. Normally, we'd go four, and then one, six, four, five, one. That would be the tonic six-four cadence. He sandwiches in here a two chord between the two, um, and it's, it's not short enough or not prominent enough for you to go like, oh, it's just transient. It's, it's part of the feature. So he has this unique sound, where instead of going just like this, where you'd be like, and then to the five chord, which would have been here, right? Um, like this. And then to the one chord, like that. He goes and puts the one, six, four right there. Now that sounds a little naked because of the octaves in the top. It's because the trumpets are filling in the other notes as well in, in the chord. But then in, inside of there, he's going to throw the, what, the two, six, five predominant in there as well, like this. And then to the one chord, uh, or five chord. It's a lovely variation on what you would normally think would be normal. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, not too many weird keys and things we're going to from here. For instance, we have a C chord, an F chord, a C7 chord, and an F. And that might suggest we're going to the key of F. And we will have a cadence in the key of F down here. But... He bails out and goes back to the key of C first cadence. So in that case, we're just going to go one, four, six for the here. And because we will persist in the key of C for the cadence, right? Then we're not going to call this a five in the key of F. We're going to call this a five inversion, six, five of four. Because F is my four chord. It's just temporary. It goes to four. And then we have the same thing happen here, exactly what happened there, right? So one, six, four, this is my D minor seven, two, six, five, going to a five. This is my five chord framed with two in the middle and going to a one. And it's an IAC because this here is not the root, okay? Next phrase, um, again, 
you'd think that we're pushing towards the F chord or the key of F again because see the B flat and the C7 show up. But when we get here, we find that this is actually a half cadence in the key of C, which is my G chord and my C chord right there. So oops, that's five. And this is one right there. This is four, six. So it's like he's pushing us saying, okay, secondary dominant to the four chord. And then here he's going to do it again right off the bat, but then not a perfect authentic cadence or an imperfect authentic cadence, but a half cadence, which is a little more transient. So it's like push imperfect cadence, push half cadence. And then this time he'll get over it actually and give us a cadence in F. We'll get there in a second. But this is a C, so it's one. This is a C7. So again, because we're staying in the key of C, we're not going to call it a 5-1. We're going to call it a 5-7, a 4, which will go to my 4 chord right there. Right? And, uh, you know, you might say, is this a chord here? But we can see with this chord sort of sticking across, it's just F the whole time again. This can give us a little more insight as to whether or not we pay attention to this. Not a problem there on six like that. Okay. And here is kind of funny. Um, he persists in the key of C for a long time all the way through. One chord, first inversion right there. Four chord. And this is a real strange three chord in first inversion. And I'll talk about that in a second. And then I have my four chord, right? And I have a five chord, first inversion, and then reposition. And then I have a one chord. And you think, oh, we're just going to do like another half cadence or something like that, like one to five. But instead, he turns this into a um, five, seven of four and ends up on the four. And that's not a normal cadence. What this feels like is in the moment here, and not before because it's a B natural, but in the moment, it goes from here and then shockingly changes to the key of F. Shocking. I'm not sure that's it's over dramatic, but then you can think of this as like five in the key of F, right? It becomes five seven and becomes one. And we have another IAC, but in the key of F. It's very abrupt. It's almost like um it's almost like he means the cadence here, but it says, no, we've been promising the key of F for a while. And so when we get to here, I'll just play um, maybe from here, right there. We have the F chord, and then we have the G7 chord, right? And it doesn't sound like a G, but then there's a trumpet sound like that as well. So there's the extra or missing note that makes it a G chord. And then it, it goes into there. is an interesting feature because he's been so pushing us towards the key of F here and here but not giving it to us and weakening the cadences as we go along and then it seems like we're all in the key of C and at the very last moment the cadence is an F. I have some thoughts on that but let's finish the analysis. Then we're immediately back to the key of C, right? So this is my one chord again through there and then here's my g7 chord right here so this is like a five um mm, like a five four three but then this this is a nice suspension that becomes a six five right there it goes to a one and then i have a d minor chord right here so two and then here is my g chord right there and you kind of go like where's my third it's right there g D, D, B, right there. I guess there's one more place where it affects the chord. Right there. So this would be my five, this would be my one, and then a five spread out. There's my seventh right there, and then one, and it's a PAC. Again, we look at the cadences. We helps us determine whether chromaticism and a line is merely chromaticism or a change of key. And once we know that, then we can analyze the chords as secondary dominance or just changes of key. Um, I think one thing that's interesting about this, if 
we plot out what our cadence is, is that he starts in the key of C. That's a 10. I guess not. He starts off in the key of C at the beginning, and he goes to a half cadence, which is a G chord, and then he goes to a PAC, which is a C chord, and that's the beginning of the piece, which is pretty standard uh, to do that kind of thing. Oh, sorry, PAC in the key of G, right? Um, if you were in um, Spencer Temko's form of music, they would not distinguish too much between these two. They'd say it's a continuous or, or a progressive cadence because it's changing the key, or whether it's a half cadence or a change of key, it's it's in a key that's not the tonic of the original key, which would have been a terminating or sectional cadence. But then, then we have a IAC, and then we have a half cadence, right? And then here we have a change to the key of C, or sorry, key of F, right? And then we finally come back and do a PAC in C. And I feel like this, although brief and weird, is really important because he's not going around to a bunch of different keys. He's doing larger scale planning. He starts off in the key of C, of course, right? This. And then by the time he's done, he says, but then we're going to do this for my cadence. It's going to launch out an adventure, right? And then to there, right? right? And then he says, okay, but then we're going to come back and give us this thing, right? Right? Um, and then sort of our proper cadence there. Then he says the next cadence we're going to be here um, with an IAC, and then here he's going to be to a half cadence, and then back to a, before we leave, he's going to say here, and then finally back to the C. It's almost like this whole thing is planned out as it's like the cadences are phrases of themselves. Or, like, if you match them up, so we go from a C at the beginning, to the G, and then we go back to the C. It's a statement. It repeats it again, right? And then back to here. And then it says, okay, now we're going out. So I, A, C, and C. And then half cadence. And then he says, okay, now before we finish, let's go to our other chord, which is four, finally. Like an amen cadence. And then play the cadence, and then finally wraps back here. So I kind of, kind of feel like this, this, that, that, and then this, and this form their own phrase or large-scale phrase. And that's why the F is so important. It's like he's saying, "Let's set ourselves up for a plagal cadence at the end," like that on a more macro or global level. All right, that's it. That's all for now. See you later.